So we are now here into mid-August on the season, and a couple updates here before we hop into the games. The first one being that Tyler Stevenson is actually starting to heat up here, finally starting to hit. He's got his OPS up to 720, which obviously isn't the most impressive, but it's a bit higher than it used to be. Also, Joe Adele has been fantastic since coming over from AAA Salt Lake with the Angels organization. He's only got 53 ABs so far, but he does have a 991 OPS in those at-bats. And then unfortunately, Josh James is going to be on the IL for the rest of the season. He tore his labrum, so pretty big injury there for him. Barely got the pitch in the big leagues, only eight innings, so unfortunate for him. And then being called up from AAA Louisville to take his place is going to be Tony Santian. We'll start things off here, taking on the Colorado Rockies at Great American Ballpark, a matchup with an NL West team. And toeing the slab here in the natty for the Reds is the former Kent State Golden Flash in Joey Murray, making his third start since being called up from AAA. And on the hill for the Rockies is the right-hander, their big offseason acquisition in Luis Severino. Take a look at the Reds lineup on the day, listed 1-2-9. We'll start things off bottom half of the second inning, Joe Adele at the dish here with one out and he's going to bloop one into right field that's going to land down in and he's just going to use his speed here to get on into second base with a hustle doubles he slides around the tag and then it's Matt Feist at the dish and bye bye a two run blast for the former Virginia Cavalier the Jackson Memorial graduate Matt Theis makes it a 2-0 lead here for the Cincinnati Reds. Move things on top of the third. Check things in with Joey Murray. He's going to be giving up a blue hit to John Hicks here with two outs to keep the inning alive. And then it would be Garrett Hampson getting plunked. So back-to-back -back base runners for the Rockies. And Murray suddenly in a tough situation, but he does work out of it as he gets Richie Martin to pop up into shallow right field that Adele puts away easily. Now Adele back at the dish. He's going to draw a walk to lead off the fourth inning here. And then that would bring up Matt Theis once again. And what's this? Drive to left center field. This one is out of here. A two-run blast. For Matt Theis, his, Matt Theis, his second of the game, and it's now a 4-0 lead for the Red Legs. Move things on top of the fifth, Randall Gritchick going to go against the shift here. Not wearing his ultra-high socks, you can't give guys like that in this game. That should be, and will be the show, take note, guys wear high socks like that. Anyways, he gets the double, then Connor Joe grounds out the shortstop for out number one. And then it would be Hannah, the center fielder, who's going to flare one out to left field. That's going to be easily put away by Senzel in left. And then for the third and final out of the inning, it would be John Hicks grabbing over to third base. Feist makes the diving stop and then recovers and uses that arm that he uses behind the plate as well to fire over to first for the third out of the inning. Move things on to the bottom half of the frame now as Jonathan India gets in on the power surge. A solo blast for India makes it a 5-0 lead. Seth Elledge then came on in the top half of the eighth inning. And he's facing the speedster Garrett Hampson, who's going to go into right field. This one's going to get past Joe Adele as some of that lack of defense shows there. And then Hampson luckily only held to a double with his speed. So he's on second base with one out. And it's going to be a chop through the right side for Richie Martin. And that would score Hampson all the way from second base, even with a strong throw from Adele. So it's now a 5-1 to one ball game. But then Murray would clutch up as he strikes at Chris Bryant for the second out of the inning and then he would get out of it as he strikes that C.J. Crone on the slider. Back-to-back -back K's for the former Kent State pitcher, as now we move things on to the bottom of the eighth, and it's old friend Luis Sessa on the hill for the purple team, and he is going to not be welcomed back very nicely. J.D. Martinez gets another power surge, a solo shot over the left field wall. It's now a 6-1 to one ball game, but wait... There was more. Sessa still on the hill. Joe Adele, once again at the dish. He's going to hit it to the same part of the ballpark that JD did, and that is also out of here. Another solo shot in the inning, and it's now a 7-1 to one lead for the Cincinnati Reds as they welcome their old friend Luis Sessa back to Great American Ballpark, and that would pretty much wrap things up as they would take that score into the final as the Reds do defend their home field here and win the game 7-1 to one over the Rockies.
Matt Feist had two home runs on the day, drove in four runs. Joe Adele had a home run, a double, scored three times. Jonathan India and J.D. Martinez each had a solo home run. And then Joey Murray had a bit of trouble early on in his big league career here, but he did put up a solid six scoreless innings on the hill for the Red Legs in this one. So we are now into September here on the season, and you know what that means? It is time to make some call-ups here in the September call-ups. We're only going to be calling up two position players this year, no pitcher for September. The first one being Ronnie Dawson. We're just rewarding him for his good season in AAA and just getting another outfielder up in the big leagues. And then we are also calling up Jake Bowers, rewarding his good season in AAA as well. He was actually great in AAA this season. So good that he actually bumped his potential up to a B rating. So if you take a look at his ratings, they're actually looking quite solid. And he could be a legitimate option to take over at first base for Joey Votto next season. And we are also about to take on the Cubs, who are actually in the middle of a wild card race here. The Cubs are still hanging on, still trying to make that push for the postseason. They are one and a half games out of the wild card. And the Reds are still here in the Natty, playing host at Great American Ballpark to an NL Central rival in the Chicago Cubs, trying to make a run here at the wild card. And on the hill for the Reds on the day is going to be Zach Godley making his eighth start of the season. Take a look at the Reds lineup listed 1-2-9 on the day. We'll start things off top half of the first inning. It's going to be Nico Horner laying down a bunt, trying to get some speed on to start the game. But Zach Godley says, no, 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 I'll make the nice play for out number one. And they would proceed to give up a single to Nick Madrigal, the man who has absolutely no power. Pushes one up the middle of the field for a base knock, so he's on first. And then he would proceed to go and try to swipe second, and Tyler Stevenson guns him down. So caught stealing, two outs now. And then Ian Happ would go down on the big Uncle Charlie there to end the inning. A scoreless frame for Zach Godley. Move things on to the bottom of the second where J.D. Martinez continues to light the world on fire here at the dish off the left field foul pole. That is a 1-0 lead here for the Reds in this game. Move on to the top of the third and look out. Zach Godley with a line drive off his face there. I mean, that is, that is tough to see. That is not a good situation. Luckily, it was not a long-term thing somehow, but he did have to come out of the game. So Godley comes out, and Ryan Weathers, the long man out of the pen, comes on in to try to scrap together some innings here unexpectedly coming into the game this early. And then he would proceed to... Get Nico Horner to fly out to right field to get out of the inning. Then we move things on to the top of the fourth. Runner on first, but Ian Happ grinds into a 6-4-3 double play. And that would make it two outs in the inning. And then Weathers works the up and in fastball. Blows that fuzz right by Patrick Wisdom. And that would end the top of the fourth. Now on to the bottom of the fourth, where Tyler Stevenson doing a little of the El Scorcho up the middle once again. As it's now a base knock for him. And then J.D. Martinez. A little bit of a swinging bunt action moves Stevenson up to second and then also does not make it at first base. So runner on second here and Jake Bowers showing what he's been doing down at AAA this season. Delivers with an absolute bomb to center field. A no doubt shot two run homer makes it a 3 0 lead here for Cincinnati move things on top of the fifth as the Cubs start to string together a couple hits here. There was Contreras singling, then after him it was Seiya Suzuki, so back-to-back -back base knocks for the Cubbies, and then it would bring up David Bodie, who's going to fly out to right field. A little bit short of the warning track, Joe Adele puts it away, but the runner from second does tag up, so now it's runners on the corners here with one out for the Cubs, and it would just be a ground ball. Frank Schwindel, 3-6-3. Three, three. End of the inning, Ryan Weathers gets out of it and keeps the 3-0 lead intact. Bottom of the fifth now, and Matt Theis continues to hit here in the big leagues. Another bomb for him, as it now is a 4-0 lead here in Cincinnati. The New Jersey native... Working that swing. So now top of the ninth inning, Lucas Sims comes on to try to close the door here and steer the ship in the right direction here as the closer as he's obviously struggled here in this season. And it does not start out well. Nick Madrigal gives up a single. Then it's Ian Happ, another single. So back-to-back -back hits. 
Then it's Patrick Wisdom, and he's going to just bloop one that barely lands in in left field, and that's going to score the run from second base. So it's now a 4-1 to one lead here for the Reds. And then Sims, still on, gives up another single to Contreras. So now it's bases drunk here with nobody out, and that would finally end the day there for Lucas Sims as Justin Dunn comes on here in a very tough situation. Nobody out, bases loaded, and it's going to be Seiya Suzuki hitting a ground ball. Bowers makes the diving stop, but he does get the runner at first. The run comes in, so now it's 4-2 here with one out, and runners on first or second and third, and then they intentionally walk David Bodie to load the bases, set up the force at any bag, and Dunn doesn't need it. He just strikes out Schwindel for at number two, and that would bring up... Albert Almora Jr., the former Cincinnati Red, and he just gets jammed inside, pops it up in the foul territory. Stevenson puts it away, and the Reds hold on, despite the Cubs' best efforts to come back there in the ninth inning with Lucas Sims on the hill. The wild card race being thwarted a bit there for the Cubs, as the Reds do upset them here by a score of 4-2-2. Player of the game honors go to Matt Theis once again, two for three in the day with a home run and a double. Jake Bowers also had a two-run home run. J.D. Martinez homered, and then Ryan Weathers coming into the game out of the pen to replace Zach Godley gave us four and a third strong innings in relief. Five hits given up, three strikeouts, and no runs. Once again, the Reds here at home at Great American Ballpark taking on the Boston Red Sox in an interleague matchup. And Tristan Cassis, one of the Red Sox top prospects, is actually making his debut. Man's built like a brick shithouse. Starting at first base, Brandon Williamson making the start for the Reds and then take a look at their lineup on the day listed 1-9. We'll start things off top half of the first inning. Brandon Williamson had it working. The man at a TCU strikes out Trevor Story, another man from Texas there for the first out. And then it would be Xander Bogots going down looking. He's a pair of shoes up there for the final out of the inning. So top half of the second now, it's going to be Blackman grounding one over to first base. Bauer knocks it down and then does make the play at first base. So another scoreless frame for Williamson. Now onto the bottom half of the frame, and J.D. Martinez, professional hitter, continues to get base knocks there as he gets a single back up the middle. Brings up Nolan Jones, who draws a base on ball. So it's back-to-back -back base runners here with nobody at as Nicky Pavetta gets two on. And then it's going to be a liner down the left field line. It's going to drive in one for Joe Adele there as he gets an RBI double, makes it a 1-0 Cincinnati lead. Then Jake Bauer spits on that pitch top of the zone. He gets rewarded with the walk, so bases are drunk here. And jo Jose Barrera then lines one in the right field. They would tag up from third and score another one as it's now a 2-0 lead here for the Reds. And then unfortunately, the bottom half of the order would not be able to get it done. Kevin Kiermeyer pops one up in the left field, and then it would bring up Nick Senzel, who's actually the one hitter, and then he grounds that to shortstop. So nothing going else in that inning for the Reds, but they do have a 3-0 lead here as we now move on to the top of the fifth where Tristan Cassis gets his first career major league hit, pokes that through the right side of the infield. Congratulations to him. Later on in the inning though, it would be Charlie Blackman who comes up. The former Rocky hits one into the right center field gap, and that's going to get up against the wall. It's a double for him. Cassis moves up into third base, so runners on second and third here with one out. And now it's Christian Vasquez hitting a deep fly ball on the left field. Senzel puts it away. Cassis tags up and makes it a 3-1 to one ball game here for the Reds as the Red Sox finally get on the board here. And then it would be... Dahlbeck hitting a single in the left field, and for whatever reason, they sent the runner Blackman, and he is dead meat at the plate. Nick Senzel with an on-the-money throw from left field, and then he comes to the plate in the top of the in the bottom of the fifth, and he proceeds to get himself a base knock. So he's on first there with one out, and then proceeds to go and swipe second base to get himself into scoring position. With Jonathan India at the dish, the one-two counts lined into left field, but it's going to be right into the glove of 
Doogie, but a very, very aggressive tag here from Senzel, but he does make it as Verdugo did catch that and had to go against his body to throw that over to third. And then it would be Tyler Stevenson ripping a ball over the head of Verdugo, really getting tested this inning. And it's an RBI double, makes it a 4-1 to ball game, move things on top of the sixth. Brandon Williamson is going to give up a little blue pit here in no man's land as that lands in over the shoulder of Jonathan India for a base knock. Then it's Trevor Story hitting one right back up the middle. Back-to-back -back singles for the Red Sox. So two on, nobody out. Verdugo then comes up, chops one back to Williamson, takes the sure out at first base. So second and third here with one out. They do not walk Bogarts, and he's just going to hit a ball into left center field. That's going to score one. The second comes around, and he's also going to score. So it's all of a sudden a 4-3 to three ball game here. They would not score any more in the run in the inning. Dylan Betances came on at the bottom of the seventh, and Jonathan India going oppo here right center field absolutely crush that you hang him he bangs him a two-run lead now here for the reds as they get a little bit of an insurance run there move things on to the top of the ninth as justin dunn not lucas sims comes on for the save and he would proceed to get himself into a bit of a jam, but he does get out of it as Charlie Blackman lines out to right field. And that would be the game as the Reds do hang on here to beat the Red Sox by a score of 5-3 to three here at Great American Ballpark as they win a lot here in September, or at least in the games that I'm playing. Jonathan India does get your player of the game honors. He had a home run in the seventh inning to a little pad the lead there up to two. Brandon Williamson pitched a solid five and a third innings. Only gave up six hits, four strikeouts, one raw, one walk, uh, one earned run. And then Joe Adele had a double on the day. Nolan Jones went two for three. All around solid performance from the Red Legs on the day as they get the W. So with that being said, that's going to wrap things up here for this edition of the Cincinnati Reds franchise here in MLB The Show 22. I've been your host, Jersey Bourne, and I am saying, Heavens to Betsy! The Boston fans are chanting profanities!